Okay, so let's consider f of x and y is minus y comma x. Okay? So what did you guys find that this does? Okay, this does some kind of counterclockwise spiral. Not really a spiral. Yeah, it's not really a spiral, it's more of an orbit. Let's see if we can figure out for sure that that's true. So let me look at a flow line. You guys remember what, a, what I told you a flow line is? You just kind of follow it from, like, you keep applying it. Yeah, you kind of need to follow it around, right? But you need to do this instantaneously. You can't do this kind of discreetly. If you want to approximate a flow line, you do discrete little steps. Oh. But if you want to actually get a flow line, you need to set up some equations. So do you guys remember what I told you the equation was? Okay. So a flow line, right, is a parametrized curve where the derivative of that curve is what you get when you take the vector field and evaluate at the point you're at. You guys with me on that? Kind of? Right, because really what's going on, right, I've got this. So if you draw this thing, right, you get this fabulous Nazi curve. You guys not notice the swastikas in this? I mean, now that you point it out. Mark, did you draw it on camera? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had to stop. That's the Hindu version of this one. All right, then. Whatever. Point is, this thing is interesting mathematically, not philosophically. So what I need is I need a curve, right, where whatever is going on has this little bit, right, where the tangent to the orange thing is the black. And that's going to have to continue, right? So whatever is going on might look like this. But those guys always have to be tangent. And then I need some way to connect the dots. And the way I need to connect the dots is that black curve has to always be tangent to the orange one. Orange one. You guys with me on that? So when I write down equations, I write down this equation. And then I say to myself, OK, R is some parametrized curve, right? So I'm really thinking, well, that's, oops x of t comma y of t, right? And those need a, that's the derivative, and these need to be x prime and y prime, right? And on the other side, I get, well, I get f, right? Of, and that's where my x of t and y of t go. But then what the heck does f do? No. What's f in this case? F's a vector field, right? Which vector field is it? The minus y comma x vector field, right? So what the heck do you get when you plug x of t and y of t into that? Good. You get negative y of t comma x of t, right? Is all good with that? Okay. Now, oh, hey, look, that's two equations, right? Did you, why did you get that? You guys see this? I got x prime of t is y of t, Maybe. and I got y prime of t is x of t. So y should be negative, negative y of t? Where? X prime of t equals negative oh, yeah. y of t. Thank you. You guys with me on this? No, yeah. No. Cool. All right. Do you know equations, x and y, that satisfy these? Sine and cosine? What do you want to think of at the moment? Doesn't seem like a good idea, right? So let me try one. Uh, let's see. So if I let. Which one's x, though? 
x would be the cosine of y e to the sine. Okay, so if I let x of t be cosine t, right? Then x prime of t is minus sine t. And is, what's y then? Sine. Oh crap, y better be sine to make that work. Right from your first equation you see y has to be sine. Okay, so if y is sine, does the other equation work? Yes. Oh, cool. That's neat. Those seem to be my curve, right? Those are r of t is cos t comma sine t. Uh, huh, that's weird. Where's that one left? If you plug t values in, how long is that vector? It's one long. It's one long everywhere, right? So, it seems like my orange curve lives in here and it's a circle. How come only that one works? Where are the others? Yeah, the magnitude of that's always one. What the hell? I think you lost something. What did you lose? Magnitude, I guess. I don't know, perhaps. Maybe it's supposed to be cosine t squared. Oh, oh, is it supposed to be like an r cosine t? Oh, shit. I, I could have put a constant in there, right? It wouldn't have changed anything. You guys all see that? I could have stuck a constant k in here, right? Then my derivative would be minus k sine t. And that would make y k sine t. And then the other equation would still work. Oh, I just overlooked it. Well, look, but then k would, k would have to change as we increase. So. Yep, so you get r of t is k cos t comma k sine t. k is a constant and it's different depending on our position. It, does that mean k, we should use a t or another variable and not k? k is usually a constant, so that doesn't change. Sure. Okay. So, what's k? Well, k really depends on where you start here, right? You guys see that? Like, I dropped a little bit of orange stuff in at 1, 0, and then kind of thought about flowing it around, right? But if I drop a little bit of fish food somewhere else, right? That thing starts out with a k. You guys see that? Okay. Like if I drop a little bit of fish food out here at, I don't know, 7 over 2 comma 7 square to 3 over 2, right? How does that flow? Like. Think about this in terms of that. What's your k? K is probably 7. What's your t? <laughs> Do you guys notice the 1 half comma root 3 over 2? Oh, it's like a pi over 6. It's pi over 6 or pi over 3. How the hell do you figure it out? Which one's uh, sine, so it's pi over 3. Go back to this guy. Yeah. Right? Equilateral triangle, cut it this way. So that's 1 squared of 3 and 2. And apparently I'm sitting where the x side is a half and the y side is. So it's pi over 3. That's it's the sign strong. Right. So that's this and this. That's yeah. the x and the y. Mm -hmm. Right? So what's my angle in here? Perfect. I'm thinking, hey, that thing looks like k is 7 and t is pi over 3. So do I care what the. Yeah, where to get the 7? I factored a 7 out because I noticed it was a 1 half and root 3 over 2 thing. Yeah, but like the original, did you just pull that out? Is that just yeah, I just thought, what if I dropped a little bit of fish food at my favorite point? So couldn't you just call that point some variable like k or anything really? Yeah, so really all I need to know is how far out it is, right? To know how this is going to flow. 
the radius. Yeah, so I noticed the radius is 7, really. You could figure out how long this vector is that points out there. That would be another option, right? And so the flow for my little fish food is 7 cos t, comma 7 sine t. You guys all see that? This is the thing about solving differential equations, right? You guys all see this? You guys know what a differential equation is? Okay, so a differential equation is an equation where there are derivatives in it. Okay. Okay. That's a little bit simplified, but it's like if we if you show one of us, we could be like, oh yeah, yeah. we could solve that. Fast. So a differential equation, right, includes mm -hmm. derivatives of various orders and the function, not integrals of any order. Okay. If you put yeah. integrals in it, it's called an integro differential equation. Okay. There's there's a cool one. We'll talk about the cool one when we do do you. But for right now, I have here a pair of differential equations, right, in two variables. And miraculously, I somehow solved. But I didn't really have a system for solving, right? I just kind of like stumbled upon the idea that it might be cosine and sine. Later, we'll have a better tool for this. But for right now, all you have is this like stumble around until you find the answer. So that is, in fact, the appropriate technique for solving differential equations where you are. Cool?